well done. Your exams are over. And this means a few things. You get to relax and enjoy the sun if it ever actually decides to come out. And this is a really sad time of year for me because I start to lose subscribers by the thousands. Literally by the thousands. So before you go, before you leave and abandon me all sad, um, I've got a few little bits that I just want to say to you. Um, a few bits I want to say to you, then a few bits of advice that nobody else is probably giving you because it's not appropriate for your teachers to give you this and your parents or the people at home might feel a bit awkward giving you this advice. So, first of all, the things I want to say to you is thank you. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for commenting on my videos. Um, if nobody watched my videos, I wouldn't make them. And I really like making YouTube videos for you guys. So thank you very much for letting me do the thing that I like doing. Because if you guys didn't watch them, I wouldn't make them. And then I don't know what I'd do all day. So thank you so much. And then I'm really, really sorry that I wasn't there for you as much as you needed me towards the end. Um, just after, actually just before the first physics exam, like the Monday physics exam, or I think the first physics exam was on a Wednesday, I got really, really sick, like stupid sick. And it took me about three weeks to properly recover and I lost my voice and everything. And I tried to make a few videos in there, but it really wasn't working. So sorry that I wasn't posting as many videos. Sorry I always wasn't doing as much live stream where I couldn't respond to as many comments as I wanted to do just because I was so stupidly sick. Um, I promise I will try not to get sick ever again. That's not really something I can promise, but I'm really, really sorry that I wasn't doing all the live streams. Um, yeah, I'm sorry guys. And then goodbye uh, if you're unsubscribing or if you've already unsubscribed, by which point you wouldn't actually be watching this video. So I don't know. I'm not, I'm not talking to you because you've already unsubscribed, but if you are going to unsubscribe, then goodbye. But before you go, I have a few bits of advice. Um, and it's kind of like, it's good advice. It's good advice that everybody should have. But it's the sort of advice that they're definitely not going to give you in school, and you're probably not going to get it at home, because sometimes these can be slightly awkward conversations to have. So my first bit of advice is that sex should be enthusiastic. And now I know that sounds like a really weird thing for me to say. And what I mean by enthusiasm is like enthusiastic consent to sex. Um, because if you're having sex or someone is having sex with you and it's kind of like you're doing it or they're doing it and it's kind of like, yeah, okay, let's do this. And it's a bit like you've just agreed to unload the dishwasher or you've just agreed to do your maths homework. It's something that you're doing because you feel like you should do, but you don't really want to do it. So you've said kind of like, yes, but it's kind of like, yeah, all right, I'll do it. That That's not good enough. Sex should be fun. It should be, yes, let's do this. Yes, yes, yes. It should be enthusiastic consent. So. If you're having sex or you're doing something and you've agreed to it but you're not kind of like enthusiastic about it, then maybe you shouldn't be doing it in the first place. Or if you're having sex with someone and they've said yes to it but it's not enthusiastically and you can tell that they're not really into it, then stop doing it to them. We're talking about enthusiasm, we're talking about enjoying yourself while you're doing something that should be enjoyable and if you don't feel you can have a conversation about this with the person that you're having sex with then probably they're the wrong person to be having sex with so don't do it and then the other thing about having sex is wear a condom yes um it doesn't really matter what type of sexual activity you're engaging in please wear a condom um it is just good general practice if you are in the middle of your enthusiastic sex and you don't feel you can stop and either put a condom on or ask the person that you're with to put a condom on then probably you're having sex with the wrong person if you're worried that that's an awkward conversation then i just want you to imagine the conversation where you have to go to your doctor or the local sex health clinic and explain that there is smelly green pus oozing out of your bits that's going to be a worse conversation to have than can you just put a condom on 
or imagine the conversation in a few years time where you want to have kids with somebody and you can't because you've got a sexually transmitted disease which makes you infertile that's going to be a worse conversation to have than can we just stop for a second and put a condom on so please just put a condom on when you're having sex any type of sex so that's the sex advice out of the way. It always freaks people out in this video when I tell them to wear condoms because they're definitely not expecting it. It's definitely not what my channel's about, but um, it's good advice. But it's the sort of advice that people at school aren't gonna give you and people at home probably aren't going to give you either. The rest of the advice is less shocking, I promise. And it goes with like, do things that make you scared do risky things. If you like somebody, ask them out. It can be for coffee or go to the shops or go for a walk and they might say no. In fact, they're probably going to say no, but they might say yes and then that'll be great and that'll be fun and then you can get into that situation where maybe you have to ask somebody to use a condom, but they might say yes and that'll be amazing and if they say no, then they say no. It's not going to be the end of the world. A few years ago, I asked a boy out, and he's now my husband. So, obviously I'm not suggesting that you have to get married to any boys that you ask out. But, if you like somebody, ask them out. They might say no, but they might say yes, and that'll be really good fun. Go somewhere by yourself. I'm not talking about risky places, I'm not talking about dangerous places, but like... If there's a film you want to go and see and nobody else wants to go and see it and nobody else is free, then get to the cinema by yourself. Get some popcorn. Go out for lunch by yourself. Go shopping by yourself. You don't have to do everything with a whole group of other people. You can do stuff by yourself. And sitting, having lunch by yourself, reading a book by yourself, it's quite, it's really quite a brave thing to do. Because you're telling everyone that, but you don't have lunch, you don't have anyone to go for lunch with, but you've got the confidence, you're confident enough in yourself to do that by yourself. You know, lots of people say they regret stuff that they didn't do. And, you know, try, try using this summer to do some of the stuff that you might regret if you didn't do. And then the rest of the advice is just like boring standard stuff, like wear sunscreen. I know it is a real, real drag to put on. Um, it's not boring, it's, well, it is boring. It's not fun to put it on, but it's a really, really good idea. Cancer is one of the leading causes of death in this country and wearing sunscreen can avoid skin cancer. So please wear sunscreen. And then while you're putting on the sunscreen, please put a moisturiser. Everyone should wear moisturiser right from an early age. Um, at your age, you don't need to spend as much on sun cream as I do. I spend large amounts on um, face cream and sun cream. You can just go buy a nice cheap one from the supermarket. But basically, any moisturiser, the earlier you get into the habit of putting it on is really, really, really good for you. So that's my random bits of advice. Um, yeah, thank you for watching my videos. That's my random advice. Yes. I've chopped all my hair off and it's gone back to being brown. Uh, the pink was quite high maintenance. I mean, I did 100% absolutely love it, except it made everything pink. We're talking like the pillowcases, the towels, my dressing gown, my tops, my hands when I had a shower and washed my hair, literally everything was pink. I had to wear gloves when I shampooed my hair um, and it was just a little bit hard work. So I've gone for kind of like, slightly less hard work hair but you know I'm kind of liking it I do miss the pink a bit I've still got it in my top I'm gonna to be here with you like I'm the I'm going to be doing loads of stuff to prepare you for results day. I'm going to be live at 2 o'clock on um, results day. I'm going to be here to answer all the kinds of questions. Because like, you know, do I need to get my exam paper through marks? Can I do A-levels with these grades? Um, what happens if my exam paper goes missing? Um, loads and loads of stuff like that. So um, I'm going to be having a little, just a short little holiday. And then I'm going to be back for results day. And then we're going to be preparing loads and loads of stuff for A-level biology, A-level chemistry and hopefully a little maths as well so um thank you guys and goodbye it's like oh, i was trying to get emotional it's been such a year oh bye ouch
This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.